Welcome to Empowering Seniors. I'm your host, Katherine Ambrose. Every quilt tells a story. Today, we're gonna hear some very special stories. Meet Chris Allen. She lives here in Kansas, and she's been going around talking about her quilts 50 different places, and we got a hot tip that this was someone that you need to meet. Chris, welcome to Empowering Seniors. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. So, we hear that your stories are fascinating. When did you start quilting? I've always sewn and quilted, but about 28 years ago, um, my youngest son, he had trouble sleeping. And so I would stay up and quilt while he was playing with his trains. And my family called that that I started power quilting at that time. Okay, and so we know that every quilt in a way tells a story, but you're really putting a lot of effort into telling stories. So share with us some of the stories that you have. And right here we have this Kansas quilt. So what's the story behind this one? I made that quilt during COVID and um, I always sang You Are My Sunshine to my kids, my grandkids, nieces and nephews. And so when I saw uh, a panel with the You Are My Sunshine logo on it, I was um, very excited to make that quilt. But usually when I make a quilt, I don't stop there. I made 12 of them at the same time. So I have 12 of those quilts. And do you still have all 12 of them? No, I give my quilts away. So my nieces and my daughters and nephews, they have these quilts. So I have actually two of them here. I have one here today and one's hanging in my office at work. And then how long does it take to make a quilt? That's a question that people always ask me. How long does it take me to make a quilt? Well, I don't really know how to answer that because I usually have five, 10, 15 quilts going at a time. Mm -hmm. And so this quilt has uh, teacups on it, and I ended up making 20, 120 different teacups. And the handles that are put on there, I hand applique those on. So each handle took me 15 minutes to sew. So that's just a little trivia about how long it takes to make a quilt. Okay, very cool. And this is a colorful one. So tell us about this quilt. Well, everybody knows about COVID-19 and a few years ago, um, the medical field and the, the scientists, they were working hard to find an answer to, to help with COVID and stop people from dying. And they were tired and exhausted. So this is just an interpretation of how one nurse, how she felt about COVID. Powerful, powerful there. Okay, and then this is another one that's COVID related. <laughs> and I heard about this one from our tipster and uh, said, you've got to see the toilet paper quilt. <laughs> so tell us about the inspiration behind this. Well, um, COVID-19, um, everybody knows that we were supposed to wear masks and use hand sanitizer, but something that came out of COVID that we weren't expecting was the toilet paper shortage. Got some humor mixed in <laughs> with all of your stories. And 
this one is incredible to me. So why don't you tell us about what inspired this one? So I give quilt presentations and in my presentation, I have a series of reproduction quilts that I made to look like uh, quilts from the Civil War time. And um, this particular one is at the end of that little part of my talk. And the women of the South, they felt that it was beneath them to sew. So they didn't make many uh, articles of clothing or quilts, that was their slave's job. And so instead of making a quilt like they may have made, I decided to make a quilt to show the clothing that they may have wore at that time. an interesting fact that I, I have never heard before. And then you have quilts that represent historic times, Civil War and World War I. This next one is a reproduction of a quilt that I made of a reproduction of World War I quilt. And at that time, women were not, um, women were not allowed to speak out politically. And so they used their quilts to hide little messages. And this particular quilt, the pattern itself is the message and it forms a T and that T stood for temperance. So we know how that woman felt about alcohol. Have you come across a lot of stories like that where women have put different messages in their quilts? Yes, that's um, a lot of my quilts in the talk are about that. Okay. And then how I have turned that around and I use those messages in my life. How have those messages changed your life? How have you used those in your life? I want people to know there's hope in life. And so I've um, used those messages to um, show that you can have hope in your life no matter what you've gone through. And maybe I have what I call my journaling quilts and one says, sow seeds of kindness and watch friends blossom and give thanks unto the Lord. And so those are just messages that I have put in my quilts that I want to get those messages across to people. Mm -hmm. So you've been inspired by quilters from years past and putting your stories in quilts. So, and it looks like we have an example of one here. So tell us about this colorful quilt. This next quilt is a quilt that's very special to me. Mm -hmm. And I put messages in my quilts. This next quilt is a Habitat for Humanity quilt. My life had um, gone in a bad direction and um, I had lived out of my, li my van for six months of my life. And then I moved to Newton and I found a little apartment and I thought things were going good. But then God sent some new people into my life. He sent some people I didn't know. He sent some people I'd never even met before. And those people came and they said they believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And they, these people came and said that they wanted to help me to put my life back together and build me a new home, a new house. And they did, Harvey County Habitat for Humanity came and together we built a new home for me and my family. That is amazing. And what a gift back to them where you have put that into one of your quilts and you're sharing that story. And so the pictures that we're seeing on this quilt are some of the people that were involved in that? Yes. They're actual pictures of them working on my house. That is really amazing. And so this is another one about your personal journey. 
Habitat for Humanity, uh, they gave me stability and the ability to make better decisions for me and my family. They showed me friendship and love. But most of all, I think Habitat for Humanity gave me hope, hope for the future. Mm -hmm. And once you have hope, anything is possible. And so this is my tree of hope. So you have quilts that talk about the Underground Railroad, and you kind of see a correlation between your life and what that was about. So tell us a little bit about that. So this next quilt is, um, the block itself is called Underground Railroad, and that was simply uh, a group of people that were helping the slaves to get from the plantations to freedom. And so they're following that Underground Railroad to the Northern Star. And I correlate that with my life that all these people helped me to get to the Northern Star to freedom and safety. And on the topic of hope, I have this next one that I would like to share. Okay. This one is uh, in honor of Safe Hope, the Domestic Violence Center in Newton, Kansas, and all the many, many services that they provided me at this time, at that time. Um, the logo is the Safe Hope logo, and I gave this presentation at the library a few years ago, and when I was done, a man came up to me afterwards and he said, I'd love to talk to you about this quilt. And he said that he was the man that designed the logo for this quilt, the, uh, for Safe Hope. And he said that he put the oak tree in there to show the strength that it takes for a woman to leave an abusive relationship. And he chose the birds to show that she's fleeing or flying from that abuse and flying to freedom. Was that interesting for you to hear the background of that? Oh yes, that was that was very emotional for me to hear him talking about that. And he told me he felt like that he made that logo with my story in mind. I love how you are inspiring hope and that's how I heard about you. And so let's meet someone else to add to this story. My next guest is the person that tipped us off to this story. Vicki Strotter. Vicki, thank you so much. This was a great story to have. And so tell us why you were so excited. We have a lady that lives at Lake Point and her daughter, Chris, um, came to show some quilts and we just thought, okay, you know, we're gonna watch a little show with some quilts. And when they started unloading the car, there were like 80 quilts coming into our place. And I thought, I have to be honest, I thought, Oh my Lord, how long is this going to take? <laughs> and then she started talking and th the very first quilt, we all just went, oh, everyone was so excited to see it. Mm -hmm. And throughout her talking, we would laugh at some of the quilts. We were in awe at many of the quilts and some of the quilts made us cry. It was just, she started from the Civil War and she worked her way up through present day. And it was just, incredible to listen to these stories. And when it was over, we all were like, wait, that's it? We wanted more. It was, it was just amazing. And I could tell how excited you were in the phone call. <laughs> and that's what we love is people from the community calling in and sharing something that uh, would be great to have on TV. 
and she put so much effort into the quilts and then going around and telling her stories that it's really great to be able to showcase that here. Were your residents at Lake Point surprised by the presentation? They were. They, um, when I would go knock on their door and say, hey, we've got a quilt show coming today, they were like, nah, I've already seen quilts. And a lot of them didn't want to come. And I said, no, you need to come because I thought we've got to have some audience. Mm -hmm. And the, when they came, they, she said usually, she, Chris said usually, she goes through her um, show telling all about the quilts. Our people were like, wait, they wanted, they had questions, they wanted to know all about it. And even the man, we had one man that came and he said, oh my gosh, all the other men should have come to this because it was the stories were just unbelievable. Maybe you can get her to come back sometime. But I was wondering if some of the men were sorry that they, they missed it. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. When the man that came told about it the next day, they were like, oh, well, I, I, I would come to that. So we may have to have her back again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how many different social engagements and educational events do you usually try to put on as an executive director? I try to have everything that we do educational. I plan art events, we have animals that come out, we have all kinds of things that come out, but this was so educational because it was history from the Civil War on up. Mm -hmm. I know they had to, to love that. They did, and so many of them could relate to the quilts that she was talking about. Mm -hmm. So many of them had lived those lives and so they knew all the things that she was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the story of hope and, and history, it's so fascinating. And so I bet you saw some uplifted faces and people walking out of there laughing and happy. Oh, and not even just that day, but days later. Mm -hmm. We have talk sessions, uh, and that was one of the subjects that they all brought up. They said, wait, let's talk about the quilts. And they all had things to say about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has inspired them to tell stories or to pick up quilting or what kind of reaction now? It absolutely did because even the men who didn't come to it, who heard about it, started telling about their grandmother's quilts and they started telling the stories about that. Oh yes, that conversation went on for quite some time. How wonderful is that, that it, it started people talking about their own lives and mm -hmm. really engaging. Because that's what it's all about, being in senior living, is social engagement mm -hmm. and um, enrichment. So how would you describe the independent living lifestyle? Uh, the independent living lifestyle is just like any other apartment complex, except it's a safer community because it's only people um, 55 and older and they, you know, we, we have activities for them all to come to. They all socialize as a group. And so this just got them socializing even more. And now they know that if that's something about quilts, you better show up. That's just right. In case. Oh, they will. <laughs> we may have to have her back again. So in senior living, there's a lot of professionals involved in bringing these events in and doing educational things. So what have your, some of your other favorite events been? Well, as you know, we have Ray Wills who comes in once a week and he does this just out of the goodness of his heart. And he um, has a storytelling class. And some people write stories, some people write, um, write poems, some, you know, just come in and tell stories. Everybody has a story to tell mm -hmm. and it, they deserve to be heard. And these folks have a lot of stories. They've lived full, interesting lives and uh, it's empowering. Uh, to use a phrase. He'd saved up some money and his old van was in good running condition, so he left his family and the next stop would be Dallas. The money was good and Carl said yes. This one year lasted three. And after about one year, Carl started dating one of the girls, uh-oh, who worked at the front door. This, that's getting good now. <laughs> What's gonna happen next? I think that's to be continued. That's pretty good, Bob. And after this quilting thing, so you. many of them had so many stories to tell and they've, it has inspired them to write more. That's amazing how that worked together. Mm -hmm. We have one man who is so proud of himself. He uh, now is putting together a book of short stories and he has 29 stories written so far. That's really so, cool. Mm -hmm. He's very proud of it. And then we have a lady who was an English teacher and she is writing poems for us. Mm -hmm. 
and another lady, her husband was a clown. And so she's starting to write a book. We encouraged her to write a book about the clown uh, adventures. So whether it's quilting or writing their own stories, the importance is communication. Plus they're bonding with each other as they tell their stories and they find things in common. Yes, they, um, not only are they communicating with each other, but the staff has started communicating with them as well. Because the quilts are an art form. Mm -hmm. Hers are not just quilts that you put together to be warm. Hers actually are a form of art. And a lot of our residents have started painting. So they're telling stories through their painting. They're telling stories through, we did ink and alcohol um, on tiles. They are just starting to create this incredible room and you'll have to come out and see it. Um, it is, it's just beautiful colors and things that happen in their lives that give them the creativity to do these things. And while they're doing that, they're all sitting around talking. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a quilting bee. When you would quilt, the ladies would sit and talk. Well, that's what these people are doing with all the different art projects. They're telling their stories to each other all day long. It's just incredible what, what you're doing there. And it just, makes me think about seniors that may be isolated at home and they're missing out on things like this. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we are to be part of the community and to share with each other. And I think that the isolation is so sad. And you can be isolated probably in senior living, but that's your goal is to, to get people to... To get everyone out of their rooms, everyone out of their apartments and come in for those who don't come to a lot, we have shows like we're going to do a, so in November to get everyone to come out, even if they don't participate in some of the activities that we do, I am having them, uh, we're doing an art show, which means that everyone will come look at what's happening. And I find that once they see what everybody else is doing, I'll say, now you could do that. And of course their answer is gonna be, no, I can't do that. I, I, I've never done anything like that. But it's amazing. Once you give them a few little instructions, what they can do and what they create. And while they're doing that, they're all sitting there talking to each other and learning about each other's lives. And it's funny how the conversation goes. It's just like you and I sitting here mm -hmm. and within five minutes, we know everything about our lives. Mm -hmm. And that has got to make them feel at home and part of a wonderful community. It is their home. Mm -hmm. It is their home. So yes, we want to make them all feel very comfortable in their home. We want to get them not just, you've lived your life and you're waiting here, you know, doing nothing. We want you to keep living your life. And that's what it's about, is getting them to start living their life even if they hadn't for a while. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing Chris's story so we could have you both here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Let's get back to our conversation with Chris. Chris, I so enjoyed hearing how you are bringing joy and entertainment and history to so many people by telling your stories and so happy we got to show so many of them. And I, I think you're impacting a lot of lives. And this, we've saved out for your final message. And so tell us about this one. I just hope that I've inspired people today and hopefully maybe you'll go home and pull out a needle and thread and, and learn to quilt because I would love everyone to quilt. Well, Chris, you're an absolute delight, and I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people. Thank so, you. So it's been great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. And thank you for tuning in to this program. If you have questions or suggestions for our show, or you want to know more information, you can reach out to us at 316-686-4500 or email us at empoweringseniors at kpts.org. I'm Katherine Ambrose, and I'll see you next time 
on empowering seniors.